Welcome to another episode of A Reimagined Energy. Today's guest is Maggie Wolsey Gray of the EVAC Association. So the EVAC Association is the Electric Vehicle Association of Atlantic Canada. If you're considering buying or renting or leasing an EV in the next little while and you live in Atlantic Canada, this is the group to join. Here we go with Maggie. Let's get started. Welcome, Maggie. Hi. Hi. So tell us, uh, uh, what is EVAC? What is EVAC? Well, it's a group of like-minded individuals uh, that share an enthusiasm for electric vehicles, for um, a new technology, um, solar arrays, that sort of thing. But we mainly focus on the movement of electric vehicles and the adoption of electric vehicles. In, uh, in the current uh, state of the gas vehicle market right now. Well, it was interesting because when we first uh, invested in an electric vehicle ourselves about three and a half years ago, uh, this was the first group that, that we gravitated toward because it's Atlantic Canada. You guys have a really good finger of what's, uh, you got your, you know, you got your finger on the pulse of what's happening. Uh, but what changes have you seen in the past five years and with people's attitudes toward EVs in Atlantic Canada? There's been a lot of changes, yeah. Uh, when we first, uh, we, we've been EV adopters uh, for five years now. Yeah, like you were one of the first ones, I think, in Atlantic Canada, weren't you? We were in the very first Model 3 in Atlantic Canada. Um, we actually flew to Toronto and picked up the car and brought it here to make sure we were the first one. <laughs> that's that's an interesting that could be a podcast yeah. all in its own oh yeah no that, that was an interesting trip i actually spent two days just watching the screen as ken my partner was driving and uh just so i could understand how this thing worked because i had never seen one before myself and he had never seen one either other than you know the odd one that maybe we saw in quebec or, or whatnot but um it was a, a very new driving experience that was quiet, it was clean, and yeah, we had a little bit of uh, road anxiety. <laughs> well, yeah, because yeah. the infrastructure wasn't quite in place. No. This is five years ago as compared to today, so oh, not a lot yeah. of charging stations to choose from at that time? No, there, well, with the Teslas, you have a supercharger, so uh, the supercharger was in Riviera de Lou, and the next one was Olac, so we had to find ways to charge, and um we became very creative, and uh, and we also made some mistakes, and you know, but we we learned, we learned quickly, and uh, as I think most EV adopters do, they've learned very quickly, you know, what their driving habits are like, and where the chargers are. We have great apps that are out there now, uh, such as PlugShare, you know, the the Charge Point, the Flow Network. They have terrific apps, and they show up the chargers are in use, so that you can maybe plan to charge elsewhere if, if there's another one close by. So yeah, so it's it's really grown um, exponentially, you know, if, if you want to put it that way. It's uh, where we were maybe just one and you would, if you saw another electric vehicle, especially if you saw a Tesla, but um, any electric vehicle, like, oh my goodness, there's that electric car. Always... And now it's like, oh yeah, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. another vehicle now, yeah, so it's, <laughs> which is so a good it's... thing. Yeah, it, it's really changed, and, and people's, people's ideals about electric vehicles before were, uh, I'm never, no, no, that's not for me. I'm not, I'm not going to to uh, go into electric and too expensive, and, and I, you know, it's just not for me. And now people are saying, well, where do you charge the car? How long does it take to charge? So there's the whole question and answer period between new potential EV owners has really changed. They're more curious, you would say. Very, yeah. That's a really good thing. You know, there's more, yeah. more keenness to learn, and probably a lot of the myths that are out there are probably being answered and addressed, you know. But... They are. And and as we know, there's a lot of garbage out there, um, and that's really what I call it, garbage. Uh, they just they just like to get people riled up and, and you know, start some kind of controversy. And 
um, we're just here as, as a group to uh, really expel a lot of that and give people confidence that knowing that if you do find yourself a position that you can get into an electric vehicle, you're making a very uh, well-deserved decision, a well-deserved to yourself. Um, you know, you're, you're making the best decision you can. Exactly. Before we dive into, the, you know, the opportunities, of course, you have to go back and talk about some of the challenges of EV owners today in Atlanta, Canada. What are some of them that come to mind? Charging infrastructure probably has to be one of the largest ones. We're so used to having a gas station at every corner and, you know, we're just used to that simplicity and ease of, of travel. And, um, you know, I like to think that maybe we're just doing everything wrong. Uh, we were doing everything wrong. We're doing everything right now. So um, chargers, you know, home chargers, installation. If you live in an apartment building, it's not necessarily easy to get a, a charger installed in your parking location. Um, you know, there, there's lots of uh, other demands. Um, I don't know, it's, it's limited. The infrastructure is limited. The supply of vehicles is limited. Um, and, and really, that's because of the um, recession and, and the pandemic. I mean, it's, it's the, the EV growth came kind of at a wrong time. <laughs> we, were, we were just getting our wheels turning and all of a sudden, wham, the whole world shut down. So, you know, so we're, we're suffering as much as every other industry is too. Exactly. That's yeah. it. So how can some of these challenges be turned into opportunities? Um, well, uh, there are some opportunities such as the HRM is putting out uh, uh, tenders right now for charging infrastructure. So you're going to be seeing a lot more public use chargers that will be available around the city. And I think that will calm and ease a lot of people's decisions to get into an electric vehicle. You know, it might, they may never ever use those chargers, but they're there if they need them. So it's like having a hospital and, uh, you know, you may never need the hospital, but it's nice to know that there is a backup. And would you say that there's a larger selection on EVs that are out there as well? Like there's more to choose from in the market? Oh, definitely. I mean, the growth over the last five years has, has been phenomenal. Um, you know, we have to we have to give hats off to Tesla because they really did push this electric vehicle movement. Um, you know, they did one thing right and they did it very well. And now we see every other manufacturer coming up with their vehicles. You know, we have the Hyundai's, we have uh, the Kias, and yeah, so lots of other vehicles are, are being manufactured right now and. Um, Again, supply chain, it's just been a real struggle, but, but they're coming. Uh, we're seeing more and more, you know, we saw uh, a brand new Subaru, all electric vehicle, you know, different types of makes and models. So it's, it's really nice to see. It's, it's, uh, it's a welcome, it's a welcome site. So what would you say is some of your advice for someone considering to purchase an, an EV? You know, for one thing, there's level two chargers, there's level three chargers. You know, to somebody, you know, may not quite know the difference, but well, I guess to start, what would be some of your advice to someone? Well, good advice is do your homework. Really, you, you know, sort of determine what your day-to-day -day needs are for a vehicle. You may only need a vehicle for commuting around the city, picking up groceries, uh, maybe making the odd little drive to Truro or down the eastern shore. Yeah, so where there are chargers along the way. So... If that's all your needs are, then maybe a, a Nissan Leaf might be your answer. If you are um, a salesperson, such as myself, um, I have to drive a lot throughout the whole province and I need a vehicle that has the longer range. So a longer range battery might be the better thing for you. So, um, but join things like uh, EBAC, joining those groups, those are, are great groups. Um, and there's lots of other electric vehicle type groups out there, but I mean, I have to plug that EVAC is probably one of the best groups. That, that's I agree. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're the most visible. Um, and, and don't wait. Don't wait for your perfect vehicle. If you think that you might have any inclination that, you know, you might go electric at some point, don't wait. Because the longer you wait, the, the harder it is going to be getting into an electric vehicle and making that leap. Well, getting into um, EVAC, you know what? What are some of the... What are some of the nice highlights that have happened that, you know, your organization has done? Because I know when I was an early member, 
you used to do a lot of meetups at Ikea. You used to do a lot of really great um, opportunities and events. So I know COVID threw a wrench into a lot of things, but what's it looking like in, you know, in the next few months for you guys? Uh, well, where we were, uh, we were doing our monthly meetups, as you said, at Ikea. Ikea has been a great supporter of EVAP. And it's a great facility because they're fully sustainable themselves. You know, they, they run on their own solar power, so that's, that's great to see. Um, so, yeah, we were doing the meetups every month there. Uh, we would do group drives, um, you know, just to to be out in the valley and see, you know, 15 Teslas driving one after the other after the other. It really does create a little bit of chat and talk. And, and where we would stop, people would ask us questions about the cars. Um, we've also done things like uh, Christmas toy drive, uh, where we support Ronald McDonald House. And, uh, you know, we also uh, participate in the parades, the Bedford parade uh, at Christmas time. That's another nice one. And we've done some group things just for ourselves as well. So members would have an opportunity maybe to go camping in New Brunswick. And I think they had a drive-in movie night, uh, the one night that they were camping there. Um, but just showing all the different ways and and um, opportunities that you can have with these cars and, and really driving-wise, cost-wise, doesn't really cost you very much at all. So, um, No, and yeah. it's a really nice community that has been established. Yeah. One of my favorites is cleaning up, you know, the the garbage that can accumulate around these EV charger, chargers and wind can blow things around and, and you do yeah. some cleanup days. Yeah, we did. Uh, we did what we call adopt a charger. So we, EVAC group, has adopted the superchargers at Enfield. And so come springtime, we get out there and we clean up and throughout the summer and we just have a coffee clean and chat. And it's, again, a great opportunity to get together with other electric vehicle drivers. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the Tesla ones. Uh, we have had other no. vehicles there as well. And it's a great way for people to come out and just ask questions about the cars because when they see all the cars, people feel more comfortable rather than just approaching one person one-on-one. See, and they wonder, what's going on over there? What are those guys doing? And so we, we've had a lot of fun and, and events, things like that. That is, you're right, it, it's created a very cohesive group of people. Um, I've made some wonderful friends through the whole, you know, five years that we've been with EVAC. And uh, we've just, we just share a lot of common interests. And not everybody sees things on the same page all the time, but um, it, it's been a great group of people and met people even like you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, what are some examples of that, that come to your mind, you know, of innovation in Atlanta, Canada? We've got a lot of good stuff here, yeah. So we have uh, a battery testing lab, um, which is run by Dr. Lucas Swan. And um, well, there's the tire generation, I believe. Michelin tire, yeah, Michelin Mich- tire. Yeah. yeah, they put a, a notice out that they're going to be expanding into EV tires, EV specific tires, uh, possibly looking at hiring up to 70 people for that. So creating job employment as well. Um, we also have had uh, Next Ride, which offers test drives on all the electric vehicles. And uh, they will go everywhere in the province uh, to facilitate these, these drives for people, non-committal, non you know, they, they are just there to show the electric vehicles and let people try them out, and touch them and feel them and, and play with them and, uh, you know, get people really excited about these cars. We also have companies like All EV, which uh, EVAC was a main supporter of All EV before they, uh, before they started. And they had this great idea that they were going to open up this shop and, and make, make it educational. And... Um, and they've done that and they've done very well with that. And uh, they've put on clinics and, and uh, information and webinars and, and uh, YouTube videos on all these electric vehicles. I mean, I can honestly say of all the vehicles I've ever driven or owned, I understand the ins and outs and everything underneath the body of that Model 3 that I own. And that's, that's something in itself. I understand how it works. I understand what everything does. And I've never had that opportunity with any other vehicle other than an electric car. That's true. It is. You learn, you learn to become a better driver, I, I'd say. Yeah. And I never knew that science was so important with school. So stay in school and 
I need science. <laughs> don't skip class. Don't skip science. Skip all the other classes. And don't skip, let's Whatever skip you do. science. Yeah. <laughs> and math. And math. Because you're going to have to figure out your percentages of yeah. how much battery range you have left and how far oh, that's you right. can go. Do the calculations. Yeah. 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 So, so, so there are important there. subjects in school. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Nova Scotia Power, I believe, they also have uh, what they call a V2G grant. Um, you know, and a smart charging program. Like, do you, do you know a little bit about that? I, I was, we were actually going to be participating in that, but it, it couldn't work because, uh, we, we live in an apartment building and we have underground parking, but the internet connection isn't that great. So you need to have an internet connection. So what that program does is it monitors how people are charging and it will ask your car to stop charging if there's more demand on the grid. And if there's less demand, then it will continue to charge. Uh, so that's just a, a bit about the program. There's a lot more to it, but it is a study that they're doing. I don't know exactly how many people they have on there, but uh, they have a fair amount. And uh, and those people are being remunerated for their uh, for their time in the program. So And I think they also got included a free charger with it. So it's a pretty good program. And so Nova Scotia Power is really taking the steps to really see how they can better improve our charging demand needs and that sort of thing. I mean, you're seeing all the windmills going up, you know, it's coming to a cleaner energy. So it's, you know, there's, there's not 100% clean energy everywhere. However, they're doing the best they can with what they have at this point in time. And exactly. they are making concerted conscientious steps towards improving that. And, and that's, and that's what we like. Exactly. Well, what yeah. can, what local businesses do or what can a business do even in Atlantic Canada or the rest of Canada? Uh, how can they be thinking about utilizing electric vehicles, maybe for their employees or for their fleets, that kind of thing? Yeah. I mean, if you have a, a company that has salespeople um, and they're just driving around locally or within a hundred, 150 kilometer range, um, change those cars over to electric cars and plug them in every night. They have a full battery every morning. And your guys are ready to go out, and and the cost is so negligible, but two to four cents a kilometer cost. So it's 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 a very low cost. Um, you know, they can buy those vehicles. They can lease the vehicle 100% right off on a lease. So there's lots where they can save there. Install car chargers at your point of business. Uh, whether you have a retail outlet, um, you know, there's uh, I think Sleep Country. They have two chargers outside of their business. You know, who would have thought? I mean, well, I guess they. You know, bring your car in, charge it up, and go have a sleep on the mattress and see if you like it. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, but it, it's more and more chargers. I mean, I would I would feel much more comfortable if I had any type of anxiety about owning an electric car that I knew if I went to the grocery store, I could plug in, spend my 25 minutes in the store, and come out and gain 30 kilometers of charging. The cost of the store is going to be, what, five cents, six cents, so... Yeah, they're making yeah. more profit on me by shopping there. So, yeah. Exactly. Well, that's yeah. an interesting lot, thought. And her, you know, I love that because right now there's, yeah. um, it's a it's a real attraction to go to a destination and you know that there is a charger there, especially the accommodation industry as well. You know, the, it's exciting. As more and more people stay, right? Yeah. You show up at a hotel and you see they have a charger there and nobody's parked there. You're like, phone and it's like, yes. <laughs> you know, it's like, I didn't know you had a charger. So again, yeah. those are that's something where accommodations, uh, Airbnb, bed and breakfast, put those types right. of information in your listings now. Just say EV charger on site or it's close a by. Yeah, it, it definitely is. That's another perk to uh, to uh, to staying at their location. And then one other thing, the Bridgewater Police, for instance, they have a, a Tesla Model Three that they use as a patrol car. Um, and they're finding great savings with that. I say I think they've already gone beyond their expectations. Uh, I don't have the numbers just yet, but um, what we're, we're going to see more and more of uh, that type of industry go to electric. Well, there's no such thing as a uh, as running ahead or, or out chasing a police car. I mean, they can out chase you big time. So, and I I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm fully eager to approach the uh, city police and say, let's get you guys on some e-bikes. You know, there's... Oh my goodness, that would be you know, such a great thing, you know? It is, you know? That yeah. 
I mean, there is no holding them back going up those hills in Halifax. <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of, there's just a few of them. Yeah. <laughs> but definitely, you know, uh, you know, th- there has been recently, a, what is it, a $1.25 million investment by, what is it, the North South Power Company. And where is that? They're yeah, that has to do with Zen Bikes, I believe. Um, Zen Bikes. Okay, that's I, a different thing? Uh, well, I'm not sure because Kurt has sent some information over to us on that. So I don't really have a lot of information on that. Okay. Um, but I know that they, I think it has to do with the Zen Bicycle. Uh, mm-hmm. which they are electric bike company and um, they as far as Kurt said he sent this to me he's an electric provider in Nigeria will help them bring homegrown battery technology to the world interesting that is and very Kurt interesting Sam- this is Kurt Sampson you're yeah. referring to he's part of the EVAC uh, board he is yeah he is one of the co-founders he and Jeremy Bernardin and uh, Johnny Beckett um, are three of the main uh, main people that started up EVAC. So, again, just a few young guys that are really interested and they didn't mind having an old person like me join you on the group. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, we're very diverse. Yeah, we're, we're very diverse because we're, I would say we're anywhere from age 35 up to 75. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not giving away anybody's ages. But... <laughs> I know, right? That's the top one. Well, yeah. Maggie, I really appreciate you joining me today and uh, continue on with the great work that EVAC is doing. Um, and at the uh, at the end of our on on our website, we'll add the link if anybody yeah. wants to join. You have a really active Facebook page. We do. We have over twenty five hundred members. That's so awesome. in five years' time to go from a group of about six people to twenty five hundred people, it's phenomenal. It's probably it's one of the as. A lot of people have come back to us and said it's probably one of the Facebook groups that they really enjoy being a part of because we're very conscious of the content that's in there and really keep on the educational and the awareness of what's going on out there. So it's to me, if I want to know anything about electric vehicles or what's going on in the world with EVs, I just go to the EVAC page because everybody's posting and reposting and yeah, it's, it's really a, a great group of sharing people. Yeah, and it's regionally focused as well. It is. Yeah, I mean, we still bring other things and that in there, and um, you know, but we don't allow any, you know, anti EV or hate or sales uh, type garbage. You know, if you want right. to put it that way, uh, we don't allow any of that on there, and it's just a lot of people don't want to be involved with, you know, all the other stuff that's out there. They they have questions and they want answers, and and we're there to provide that to them. So. It's great. People will ask a question on there. And all of a sudden, I'll see like, bam, 20 answers. Like, well, I guess I don't have to answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> Four years ago, you may have, but now there's other people who, who yeah. you know, it's, it's great to see it growing. It, it's been exciting. Like the last five years have been a real exciting ride. And, uh, you know, we're, we're really enjoying it. And, and we see the next five years, the vision of the group is, uh, is to really promote the fun and, and enjoyment of the vehicles. I think we've done our educational part, which yeah. I mean, we'll never stop educating, but it's um, it's really a group now where we can have different uh, areas. So we might have a, a chapter in Cape Breton, we might have a chapter in Halifax, a chapter of the Eastern Shore, down the South Shore, the Valley. So we'll have all these different chapters and people that can get together and, and have their own events and, and then share those ideas. And, and such. So I think it'll be, it's part of a great movement that we're really, really proud to be a part of. It's great to see the, uh, how it's all evolving as well. And, and it's evolving. Been... <laughs> Evolve. That's right. <laughs> evolving with the times. <laughs> well, thank you, Maggie. It was great. And, um, it's, uh, thanks for joining me today. I'd love to have you guys back on on a future episode and uh, maybe in five years time and see how you know we can compare this to the next who knows oh definitely no well thank you for the invite it was great to chat that was maggie from evac who was talking about all the wonderful things that their association is doing in atlanta canada and thanks again for joining me today this episode was sponsored by smart energy Canada's Clean Energy Technology event that's taking place in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Make sure you register. I'm Maria McGowan, and thanks for listening to Reimagined Energy.